Modern communication technology equipment is very safe to use, but there are a few important points to keep in mind. Since we're using a lot of electrical equipment, make sure that you inspect all of the power cords that you're using to ensure that none of the prongs are loose and that the cord jacket or sleeve hasn't been damaged or in the cable isn't frayed. If you're going to use an extension cord to plug in an item, use the shortest extension cord possible and make sure that the extension cord is grounded. When using lighting equipment, make sure that the light is properly supported by a stand. For continuous light sources such as this OmniLight, watch for heat buildup. The light inside is very, very hot. The outside casing for this light will get extremely hot. Just use the handles to move and position the light. Never stare directly into the light. If the bulb were to burst or uh, become damaged, glass fragments could enter your eye. If you need to change the bulb for some reason, use eye protection. When you're not using a light or any piece of equipment, turn it off to conserve power and keep it safe. For cameras and other equipment that needs to be supported, make sure that you use a good sturdy tripod, such as this one. Ensure that the legs are completely extended and that the unit will provide maximum support for the camera. When you're working indoors in the studio, make sure that the studio area is as clear and free of debris as possible to avoid tripping. Likewise, if you're shooting outside, make sure that the area around you is safe for maneuvering and that you feel your public safety is not being compromised. If you're going to work on a computer station, ensure that you have a proper spot to sit down, that your feet are flat on the floor, and that your keyboard and mouse are in a comfortable position for your hands. Make sure that your eyes are not too close to the monitor and take a break every 20 minutes. Your eyes will thank you. Today's lesson is going to be on digital audio workstations, or DAWs as we often refer to them. Now, first of all, what does a digital audio workstation do? What is it used for? It's to record, manipulate, process, and finally play back sounds. And those sounds can consist of anything you want, really. Um, they can consist of music or, or sound effects and voices and all the rest of it. And you can be combining those in your, your digital audio workstation and working with them. You have both a hardware and a software component in a digital audio workstation. Let me introduce you to our digital audio workstation right here. This is called Pro Tools and that is the software component of our digital audio workstation. The hardware component is called the M-Box. And the main function of the M-Box is to get sounds into Pro Tools. We're actually going to be recording sounds into the M-Box where it's then amplified and put into Pro Tools. And then it will go from Pro Tools back out to the M-Box where it will go to a set of speakers or some other kind of output device so that we can actually hear our audio. <laughs> Setting up Pro Tools in your M-Box for recording purposes is really quite easy. Uh, in this case, I'm going to do a voice recording with a microphone, and I'm going to record a guitar signal into Pro Tools. Quite simply, we come from the microphone with a cable into the rear input of the M-Box. Likewise with the guitar, using a guitar cable, which we will put into the rear input of the M-Box. From the M-Box, it will then go by way of a USB cable into Pro Tools where it will be recorded in whatever fashion we, we like. And then by way of the USB cable, it's going to go back to the M-Box where I'll be able to monitor what I'm doing on this set of headphones. <laughs> The 
signal is going to come from my microphone by way of an XLR cable to the input of the M box, and I'm going to plug it in input number two, mic in. Likewise, the signal is going to come from my guitar by way of a cable called a tip ring and sleeve, and it's going to go into line in of the M box. Line in is also referred to as TRS or tip ring and sleeve. Now that we've connected our input devices to the M box, we're coming around to the front panel where I'm going to plug in a set of headphones to the headphone jack so that I can monitor the output of Pro Tools and the M box. There's also another set of outputs in the rear panel that you should be aware of. And let's have a look at those. In addition to monitoring with headphones on the front panel of the M box, we also have a pair of outputs on the rear, right here. These outputs would be used to go to an external amplifier, which would then in turn go to a, a, a set of external speakers. Over here, we have our USB connection, where you would go to your computer and Pro Tools. Now that we have our inputs and outputs hooked up on the M box, let's have a look at the front panel controls to see how we, the different ways that we can manipulate those input and output levels. Let's take a closer look. Let's begin with the level control of the headphones. To increase the amount of level going to the headphones, simply turn it clockwise. Or to decrease the amount, turn it back down. Go the other way. Same with our monitor to increase the amount of output going to your external Amplifier and set of speakers, turn it clockwise. To decrease the amount of level, go the other way. The next three buttons we're going to deal with in a later lesson. Let's go over here to our channel volume controls. Channel 1, we have our guitar plugged into. Channel 2, we have our microphone plugged into. If you have a look here on the front panel, you have a microphone and DI switch. Because our guitar is a higher level. We want it on DI rather than microphone level. To increase the amount of level coming from the guitar into the M box, turn clockwise. Over here we have our microphone coming in. We want that on microphone. To increase the level coming in, turn it clockwise. And watch what happens if we bring too much level into the M box we get a thing called a peak light that flashes every time I speak because the volume is very high. We would like to avoid that peak light because right now my voice is coming in at much too high a volume for the M box electronics and it's becoming distorted. By now, you should have a clear understanding of what a digital audio workstation is and what it does. You should also have a good understanding of the hardware component, that being the M-Box. You should also have a good understanding about how to set up the M-Box, inputs and outputs and some of the terminology used, and how it manipulates sound for the software components you're going to learn about next. Don't forget to carry out the assignment on the M-Box that has been provided for you with this DVD. Now, next lesson is going to be on the software component, Pro Tools. Pro Tools, if you remember, is where you can record, edit, process, and playback sounds. But for now, I think I'm just going to have a little bit of fun. <laughs>